today was back at school today for more than a million New York City school children. And there will be some challenges, as we heard in Art McFarland's piece, for students this year. Absolutely. And joining us to talk more about that, we're lucky to have the Chancellor joining us to tell us how the day went. You were just saying how uh, happy you were at the first numbers and what you're seeing from people in the turnout. Good afternoon. It's yeah. been a great day. The weather was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I want to put it in context. We have 1.1 million students returning to 1,819 schools, the largest number of schools we've ever had. We opened up 76 six new schools this year. We've delivered 1.5 million new textbooks to schools. We've had over 7,000 buses traveling the city, picking up students and returning them to their bus stops. So it's a large undertaking yeah. and all reports basically is that it went fairly well. Uh, we want to get to as many of our sure. uh, viewer questions as we can. A lot of them have to do with the core program, the uh, Common Core program. You know, last month, the first round of test results tied to the Common Core standards release. It only found 26% uh, of students uh, uh, city students pass the English section and 30% pass math. So here's a question from one of our viewers. What's being done to improve the scores? And do you worry too much? Time will be spent simply teaching children how to pass tests. Well, that's a great question. One, we're working very hard. Our teachers are working very hard on helping our students think critically. And with the new test, it's not around multiple choice. It's for them to do deep thinking. So it's not teaching to the test. It's really teaching them to understand concepts and to prepare them for college and careers. In the past, the tests were geared towards more high school graduation, and we've seen a 40% increase in our high school graduation rates, a 50% reduction in our dropout rates. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is raising the standards, and this is a new baseline for our students to achieve at a higher level. Not surprising. We were getting a lot of uh, questions from parents also about class size mm -hmm. and trying to reduce the number of kids um, in each classroom. So specifically, uh, one reader is asking, one viewer is asking, is what are you doing to reduce class size across all grade levels? So one of the questions really deals with class size, but it really should deal with teacher quality. And what we're doing is improving teacher quality. So no matter what the size of the class is, we have great teachers in front of the classroom. But overall, over the last 10 years, we've basically have allocated $25 billion to new school construction. We've created 126,000 new classroom seats, and those seats are located in new neighborhoods. And like Arts Piece indicated today, I went to several of those new schools, mm -hmm. including where the mayor and I were this morning, Gregory, Gregorio, Gregorio Luperon High School. And that's a school that we developed back in 2008, and we went to normal new schools today that have new classrooms. And so mm -hmm. classroom size basically is the same, but at the same time it's around teacher quality. So our new teacher evaluation system is to help us improve the teacher quality and making sure we're giving feedback to teachers to make sure they are doing the job properly. You know, along that line, here's a concern uh, from a parent in Upper Manhattan who's worried about access to pre-K. Why don't we take a listen to what she has to say? I would want to see more pre-K seats available for the children of the heights because there's a lot of four-year-olds that are not in school because there's just no seats available. So is anything being done to get more kids access to pre-K classes? Well, I, I didn't hear the question directly, but I mean, what we did was early on this year, uh, we announced where we we're going to have 4,000 additional universal pre-K four-year-old seats throughout the city and especially in underserved neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And we did a detailed analysis and we allocated $20 million of additional money for pre-K. And since the mayor has been in office, we've expanded the number of pre-K seats. We started the first program in Brownsville of children who are birth through five mm -hmm. and having a program there. So we're expanding the number of pre-K options and it also works with what I announced yesterday in that we're also expanding the number of after-school seats as well. Mm -hmm. So we have a number of after-school seats expanding by 4,000 and so we've allocated an additional 13 million dollars for that as well. So both from the pre-K side as well as after-school we're expanding those seats and opportunities for students across the city. That expansion is so important. One last yeah. question we want to talk to you about and it's such a, an important issue to every parent and that's bullying. So what are you, what are the New York City Public Schools doing? It, it, you know, it hits at every grade, uh, verbal and physical bullying. Well, it's not just verbal and physical, it's also cyberbullying as well. Right. And so we've been doing a lot of work. We have Respect for All Week, but we've also incorporated Respect for All throughout the year. We've developed a Respect for All library where mm -hmm. teachers, parents, and students can download information. We do training on a regular basis with our staff as well. We encourage people to report any incident of bullying. And we are very clear in working with our staff and addressing those issues as well. 
Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more as far as making sure uh, we are very aggressive around the enforcement of those who are bullying individuals and holding them accountable as well. So we're very clear and we've articulated clear policies on bullying and respecting others based on their differences, but also making sure people don't disrespect people based on any type of issue they may have in bullying and having a lot of mediation programs in place to so, address that so as well. So important. I want to thank you so much for making time and uh, wish you, the students, and the parents have a wonderful year. And thank you for teachers. everything that you've done this weekend in promoting what we're doing in education. We want all of our parents and our students to have a great year. We have great staff and they're going to do a fantastic job this year. Well, we really do appreciate your time. Thank you. you know that's been a very busy day for you. Thank you very much <laughs> for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much, right. Chancellor.